I figured it was time to make another cookie jar, and I thought a scarecrow would make an awfully cute cookie jar. Stay tuned and see how fun and easy this project is. All right, we're starting our cookie jar just like we always do. We have a strip of medium weight cardstock in white that's three fourths of an inch wide by four inches long. And I've got a Sharpie pen here just so that I've got a good surface to roll this around. Now I'm going to make a mark where that first roll kind of meets. That way I know where to put my glue. You'll see why in a minute. And then I'm going to, so I've got my glue standing up instead of laying down. I'm going to roll this around as tightly as I can just so that I can kind of get this, this piece of paper to start having a curve to it. And now I'm going to put some nice thick tacky glue. I prefer a very thick tacky glue for this. From that mark on, I want to spread my glue on this side of my paper. This is the side that will touch the paper. And try to get it all the way to the edges in this area. And then, it's okay if there's a few spots missed. Then I'm going to take a little bit more glue. Oops, I'm gonna to have to get a little glue out on my tray. That's quite enough. Using a toothpick to help me spread the glue nice and evenly. And this is on the opposite side at that end. Excuse the runny nose. I'm just getting over a nasty cold. All right, and I'm going to wrap this around, keeping this as tight and as straight as I can because this is the core we're going to be building our cookie jar on. So it needs to be well done. Slide it off of the pen so it doesn't stick to it and let it dry. And that's the secret to this step is making sure this is completely dry. Uh, be sure and check the blog post. I'll go into more detail on the blog post about why I do it this way and what the rationale is behind it. But I'm gonna let this dry and when it's completely dried, I'll be back and we'll start building a cookie jar. All right, this has had sufficient time to dry so the glue won't come undone or anything in the oven. Now I've got just some original Sculpey. Any, I prefer to put a white clay as my first layer. That's personal preference, but I think it makes it look a little more realistic and it kind of blends in with that white paper. Now I'm rolling this out, I'll show you in a second. You want a consistent layer and my Sculpey has gotten some gunk in it and I'm okay with that because this isn't gonna show. I use some just craft sticks to give myself a nice, even roll of clay. Pull that off. Cut myself a piece there. I want this just a little bit, just barely the height of that core. And I'm gonna roll it around and find where it's just, and I find that these do, this does grow, so I usually cut it just a little bit short of going all the way around. Then I have liquid clay. This happens to be liquid Sculpey in white. And I am going to cover the one side of this layer of raw clay. Anytime you add raw clay to anything other than raw clay, it's important to add a liquid clay to act as a glue. Um, it's one of the many uses of liquid clay. So now I'm going to rub that around and get that to join up nice and neat. See, it does grow just a little bit because that liquid clay softens it just ever so much. Trim it off with my clay knife. Now I am going to take a double layer of this 
and I am going to, this is not, there. Now this is being attached to the raw clay that's on the side, so this doesn't need any liquid clay. I like to use a double layer because I find I found on the cookie jars that I made at the beginning of this series that sometimes the bottom didn't hold up very well. That when I did the bottom with a single layer, it kind of sucked up in and it was very fragile. So I have been using a double layers on the more recent cookie jars. It's up to you. So I'm going to trim that off so it's nice and neat. And off camera, I will neaten that up a little bit. Now I'm going to make a snake of the same off-white clay. And I want to make a snake that's just slightly smaller than the inside di dimension of that, inside diameter of my cookie jar itself. I'm rolling it with the knife so that it will stay kind of round. And I'm cutting it, oh, probably about a quarter inch thick. This is what we are going to build our lid on so that then this will stick down in the cookie jar and help the lid to stay on the cookie jar so every time your dollhouse is bumped, the lid won't pop off of it. So like I said, off camera, I will go ahead and get this nice and tight. I am going to make sure that still fits. Yes, it does. Now all of this is going to be baked at the recommended temperature for whatever clay you're using. For I'm just going to do 10 minutes. I just want to get this baked off. And then when this is baked and cooled back to room temperature, we'll come back and we'll start adding our scarecrow face to our cookie jar. So I'll be right back. All right, these are baked and cooled, so I'm going to put off to the side for a second. And I have just some Sahara color Fimo, and it's kind of a beige. I'm going to do a beige color for the main part of our cookie jar. Excuse the fact that my table has decided to be very, very noisy this morning. I think I need to tighten it. And normally I would roll against my craft sticks, but I want this to be thinner than that. So I am rolling just out. And I'm not sure what I'm getting on my clay. I think it's coming off of my roller, which means after I film this bit, I'm going to sit down with a wet wipe and clean that off really well. So I'm going to cut this to be about the same height as our cookie jar. And I'm going to roll it around, cut it just slightly less than what goes around it. And now we are going to be adding raw clay to baked clay again. So, we need to put liquid clay on. This is white liquid Sculpey. We're going to be using that quite a bit today. And I did not cut this straight, but that's okay. It doesn't matter if it's cut perfectly straight because we can trim it. It's better to trim down to size than to be too short. I'm not covering the bottom because I want the bottom to be white. If you look at a real cookie jar, usually the bottom would be white. Off camera, I'll do a better job of trimming this when I can get it up to where I can really see it, but right now I've got it where you guys can see it better, hopefully. So I want to take all the little bits of Sahara clay off the top. I want to make sure this is sealed down really good. I am going to place this on a piece of parchment paper on my paper plate to bake because I don't want this to stick to my paper plate or anything else you might be baking on. Now, once I have this on exactly the way I want it, all the little bits that I don't want off. Let's see, do I want to add 
think since this is going to be a scarecrow, let's see if I can get this rolled out. I'm going to add just, let's get this trimmed off. I want to add just a little bit of detail around the bottom if I can. I may not be able to. This may be too soft with the liquid clay in it. And that's okay, we can add details with our paint. I'd like to have just a little bit of a marking like this is fabric gathered at the bottom. So I am going to continue to work on this off camera a little bit, then I'm going to bake it for 10 minutes. Once it's baked, it will need to cool back to room temperature before we can go on to our next step with this. So once this is baked and cooled, I'll be back and we can move on to our next step. All right, so here's our cookie jar base and I've got little gathering marks of them. We're gonna put a face on a little bit, but first we're gonna work on the hat, which is the lid. We're gonna do that a little bit differently this time. So what I've got here is some Sculpey 3 in hazelnut. And I am going to start by rolling down. I've got my two craft sticks laying here so that I get a nice even piece of clay. level and I've got a round clay cutter that's about one and a quarter inches in diameter and I'm going to cut my clay and I'm going to use my clay knife to pick it up off of the tile that way I don't distort it as much when I am uh, picking it up now the reason I want to have this so big is I want to kind of make it go down a bit. So this is gonna be our first baking and what we're going to do, I'm gonna take a little of this liquid clay, just a dot in about the middle. And it's okay if it's not completely in the middle. That's okay. And I've got a piece of parchment paper here And what I want, I want that to be pretty close to the middle, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I want this to come down. I want the brim of the hat to be down a bit. And now I'm going to put this on my paper plate and I'm gonna bake this part alone for 10 minutes. Then I'll come back and we'll make the top part of the hat. So I'll be right back. All right, now we have a brim on our hat and I've already tried it on, it's going to look really cute. So let's add the top to our hat. First, we're gonna, first I'm actually gonna put this onto here. At this point, it almost could be a mushroom. We could build a mushroom on the same base. So I'm just gonna take some of my clay and I'm gonna make a ball. I'm gonna form the top and then I'm going to add it to the lid. And I want, Kind of a pointy hat. Hopefully you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So what I'm gonna do, I don't need it on top of there anymore. I'm gonna add some liquid clay. And this is one of those spots where I really, really wish I had the translucent clay, but even it would show a little bit, so. And I'm gonna pull this out. If you wanna add texture to this, you could at this point, but I think I'm happy with this just the way, oh, let's get it all the way to the edge there. I think I'm happy with this just the way it is. So I'm gonna set this off to the side and let's go ahead and make the face on our little scarecrow. So let me put away my clay and get out 
some surfaces that I could work with because we are going to use liquid clay and oil paint to paint a face on here rather than using paint later. So I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my colors all mixed. I've taken a little bit of liquid Sculpey. It's the white liquid Sculpey that I've been using lately. And I have mixed in just a little bit of oil paint into them. I've mixed a little titanium white into this pool. I have mixed, I mixed up some vermilion red and some lemon yellow to make an orange and then mix that into this pool. And then I took some lamp black and mixed into that. And I'm using toothpicks to apply this. Now I am going to attempt to do this. I actually think for the, I don't know, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna try using my dotting tool for the white. Because the point on the toothpick is not really helping me any. That's better. So this is white liquid clay mixed with a little bit of the white oil paint, just to remind you what I've got here. And I might just use the dotting tool to apply this. Now you could bake this off at this point. If you're not comfortable continuing, go ahead and bake it off. Remember, you can bake your piece as many times as you want, as long as you don't go above the recommended temperature for your for any of the clays you're using. Taking the orange. I don't remember if I just said it or not, because this is actually the second time I'm filming putting the face on. But I like using this as opposed to acrylic paint because it's going to give a little dimension to our face. It's going to look a little bit more finished. And you can do this as much or as little as you want. Oh good, my hands are going to shake now. Of course they are. that off and I think I'm going to bake this and then come back and we'll do the eyelashes in the second step. So I'm going to put this onto the plate with the hat and I'm going to bake this for 10 minutes at recommended temperature and then when that's baked and cooled I'll come back and we will put some eyelashes on our face. All right these are baked and cooled. I do want to mention I actually left the hat in for 20 minutes I took this out at the 10 minute mark and then left this in for another 10, simply to be sure that we got this clay in the center of the hat cured. You wanna make sure that your clay is completely cured before you're done. Now, let's go back and now that I'm not going to mess up what's already there, get back into here. And you can do as many or as few eyelashes and details as you want. I think I should have gotten a finer dotting tool. So I think now I'm going to move to a toothpick. I'm not crazy about what I did there, so I think I'm going to add a little white to Fix that in just a second. going to bake this again for another 10 minutes and once it's baked and cooled we can go back and put on a clear finish and then our cookie jar will be done and ready to use. I'll be right back. All right everything is baked and cooled so I'm going to grab some of this blue poster tack. I've just got one of those 
ginormous craft sticks from Walmart. Um, I'm going to use that to hold on to this right now. That way I can work on these and not get my fingers all messy and not get fingerprints on these. So I've got some satin Mod Podge. I'm going to pour it onto this container because I don't like working directly out of the bottle. Um, it's just something I don't care to do. And all we're going to do, by having this on here, I can quickly get a nice finish on. Now, when you're using Mod Podge, you want a very light, even coat. You can always go back and put a second coat on. But as I say quite often, Mod Podge, no matter what you're putting on, whether it's polymer clay, paper, wood, I've had it do it on all kinds of surfaces. The more gloss there is to your Mod Podge, a heavy coat tends to stay sticky. A thinner coat, generally, you won't get the sticky, tacky residue on it. If you do, put another coat on and let it cure all the way, dry all the way, and then put a fresh coat over it that's very thin and very even. And usually you can get rid of the stickiness. All right, I'm gonna let those dry. I'm gonna wash up my brush. When they're all dry, I'll come back and we will look at our cookie jar in its finished, look at it finished, whatever I'm trying to say. Well, here is our finished Scarecrow cookie jar. I think he turned out really adorable. I hope you enjoyed him too. Be sure and check the blog post for more photos and more information, as always. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure and hit the like button. Leave me a comment. What kinds of themes would you like to see for miniatures for your dollhouse? If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, be sure and hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up my next video. Thank you very much for watching today, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!